Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Talking about the gas tax uh, in Tennessee, the proposal in the legislature. Representative John Ray Clemens, Democrat from Nashville, is here. Um, several people on the line, several people also commenting via Facebook. We'll get to your comments in a moment. Let's go to the phones. Caleb. Hello, Caleb. Yes. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, thank you guys for taking my call. Um, I, my question is, where is Haslam on the grocery tax cut in exchange for the gas tax raise? And uh, why is it that the GOP continuously votes against everything good for our state? Uh, seven cents is surely um, that they can reach into their donations from the NRA they get and uh, really help our cities and our state grow. I mean, Nashville's developing, our state, just, our state is developing. Um, I mean, we need to keep up public transportation exactly what we need. I think gas tax will really help that. Um, how do we expect? to progress as a state when we can't even offer better transportation options to others. I mean, I know I for one am tired of hitting potholes on the interstate. All right, well, let's, I'm going to say that's a supporter of the gas tax, but um, he asked specifically about some of the tax cuts that are in the governor's yeah. proposal. Yeah, it's a very good question, Caleb. And and there is a grocery tax cut. Uh, us Democrats really held out and are still holding out for some more um, cuts to benefit working families. Uh, one of them, we've gotten the grocery tax cut down, uh, or the food tax down from 5% to 4% uh, on all food and food ingredients. Um, now, of course, when we got that, only eliminating that down to 4%, they went in and decided to cut the entire haul tax down to 0% over the next four years. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, they've snuck in this huge corporate tax cut to the tune of 200 something million dollars uh, on the franchise and excise taxes. Um, and so there are some good tax cuts in here uh, that, you know, that will hopefully offset for some working families um, the tax increase that they will see or feel if they if they fuel up regularly. Uh, now. You know, so my concern is he touched on a topic of this gas tax will be good for public transit. It will be somewhat good for public transit. It's not going to do, again, what we would all like to see here in the Nashville region, which is facilitate and help fund, a, you know, a forward-thinking, comprehensive kind of plan that most other countries in Europe and everywhere else, any real city, any great city has a comprehensive mass transit system. This isn't going to get the job done. It will start us down the path, but it's not going to move us there fast enough for any of us, uh, for any of our uh, preference. On Facebook, Colleen McVicker Lloyd says make corporations pay um, f fewer fewer tax breaks for corporations, essentially, is what is what she's saying. And that's, I guess, echoing some of what you said. Let's go to Darren. Hello, Darren. Oh, uh, good afternoon to both of you guys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, uh, Representative Clements, uh, I wish you would run for either mayor or either <laughs> governor because I think you're one of our better uh, politicians and lawmakers. Uh, my question or comment is, is that, you know, a lot of our taxes go to help other counties. Uh, for one, I, we have to, in Davidson County, go through MARTA uh, to get the car inspected. That's $9 per car. Uh, and I don't know the total of how many cars a ballpark average in the state of, in the county of uh, Davidson County, how much that uh, adds up to. But basically, certain other counties of people who come into Nashville don't have to uh, go through martyr in their counties. And, but yet they're using our roads on a daily basis. And I don't think that's fair. I think we need a uniform martyr for all of our counties in the state of Tennessee or none for all. I just think it's not fair, and I think uh, it, that would help a great deal if we did that. I would like to hear his uh, thoughts on that, and you guys have a nice evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Yeah, he touched on a good point. It is a county-by-county county issue where emissions testing and things like that are, are paid at the local level. Now, most of those funds, uh, they, they, some of them are shared, but a lot of those are locally collected and, and kept locally. Um, but a lot of our taxes, again, that are collected here in Nashville, we're, you know, we're a progressive city, we're booming. A lot of the taxes collected here benefit people across the state. And that's one of my frustrations in the General Assembly is, you know, there's constant attacks on Nashville, but they don't want to admit, they either choose not to acknowledge or they just don't understand how much we benefit them. Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of different things. But he raised a really good point also is the impact on our roadways 
of people just driving through. Not just Nashville, but even Tennessee as a whole. This is the crossroads of America. We have a substantial amount of heavy load and traffic coming across this state. You know, whether it be 24 and 65 kind of going north and south, or we have 40 going east and west, significant amounts of loads coming across here. Those companies need to be paying their fair share. There are ways to do that and to have them pay their fair share. I don't think they're sufficiently contained within this legislation uh, that's moving its way through the legislature. I was upset the governor didn't get more creative with trying to collect those types of revenues from people putting weight on our roadways and causing our bridges to buckle. Um, and you know, one of the interesting facts nobody really talks about or nobody's thinking about really, and every time I mention it, people's eyes get big, is you know that the Panama Canal has just been widened. You know, New York's harbor, they're redeveloping bridges up there to accommodate the larger loads. Virginia, South Carolina are putting massive amounts of money into enlarging or making their ports larger to facilitate this heavy new cargo coming through this new wide Panama Canal. Well, guess what? All that freight has to go somewhere and it's coming straight across the state of Tennessee to get anywhere in, the, in this country um, if it's going that direction. So we have to figure out a way to make these folks contribute. And it's not just gonna happen with a gasoline tax. It's not just gonna happen with a diesel tax, even if they fuel up here. So we've gotta get more creative in that regard. That is part of the argument. The gasoline tax at least somewhat captures people that drive through, but you're saying there's more that could be done. There's a lot more that can be done. You know, it, it, tractor trailer companies or these trucking companies, you know, most of them have programs and on their mobile phone that tells them in real time where the cheapest place to fill up is. Before they leave the state of Georgia, they know if Tennessee's rate is X, they need to fill up at Y. And so these companies know exactly where the cheapest gas is. They track it every day. They fill up where it's cheapest when it's most available to them. And so you know, those are interests, but people traveling through just in their automobiles, you know, we may capture their gas tax, but that's not fully going to solve addressing our problem. Let's go to Jan. Hello, Jan. Yes. Go right ahead. Okay, I was born in Nashville a long time ago. All right. It was great back then. <laughs> uh, if they had listened to Bob Clement, the people up there on the hill, we would have had a monorail by now because it would have been completed. But no, they, they thought they knew more than Bob. Okay. So you're talking about mass transit, I guess. Oh, this is we ever had. Okay. All right. Well, she raised a good point, you know, and I worked for Bob in, uh, when he was in the U.S. Congress, and I will say that was where my passion for mass transit started. And, you know, he, he was, I, you know, kind of a visionary in this respect. You know, the Music City Star is a result of Congressman Bob Clement. Um, and he really put a lot of work into that. And, you know, it was it was w like pulling teeth to make that happen. Um, but ultimately, with the state's help and, and the federal government, we were able to get that. And you're starting to see success out of that. Um, and, and with the new development of ways to get around downtown, people don't feel like they're being, you know, left to hanging out at Riverfront. They can actually move around town now. So all of this is starting to fit together. But I think she's right. You have to give Congressman Clement um, a, a little credit on this for really starting that discussion way before anyone else. All right, Jan, thank you for the call. Uh, we're going to take a break. If you want to call, there's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We're also uh, taking comments as we stream this live on our Facebook page. You want to be part of the conversation, comment down below, and we'll include your comment. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.